Thank you for tuning into the Forefront Radio. I'm your host, Afiel Levi Israel. Now, if you're interested in helping us promote our brand, please feel free to donate to our Cash App. Our Cash App is uh, dollar sign Afiel Levi. That's A P H I E L L E V I. And that'll go directly to the Forefront Radio so we can produce more incredible shows for you to listen to. Now, if you haven't heard about Anchor, it's the easiest way to make a podcast. Let me explain. It's free. There are creation tools that allow you to record and edit your podcast right from your phone or computer. Anchor will distribute your podcast for you so it can be heard on Spotify, Apple Podcasts, and many more. You can make money from your podcast with no minimum listenership. It's everything you need to make a podcast in one place. Download this free Anchor app or go to anchor.fm to get started. Thank you. Forefront Radio, where we discuss history, the Bible, the history of the Israelites, science, and other matters. Bring it out. The history of the blacks, Hispanics, and Native Americans as it relates to the Bible. Who were you prior to slavery? Who were you prior to colonization? These answers and more can be seen and heard as you listen to the Forefront Radio. Things above. 
above heavenly Never live in sin, bruh, cause you die suddenly When I learn the truth, I got myself together Examine myself through the stormy weather Sirach chapter 2, constantly endure Overcome temptations, live your life pure Be strong in the Lord when you live in a low estate Take cheerfully, put a smile upon your face Understand his grace, periods to flee the evils of this wicked place Truth in the Bible ain't a game Spirit of truth, fire in the flame Give me the strength like umbrellas in the rain Give me the strength like we breaking all these chains Give me the strength, all through all this pain Welcome, welcome. I am uh, Afia Levi, the host of the Forefront Radio. We have Jen with us in this clubhouse discussion. We were going to wait for a couple of more people to join in, but I guess we could just start off with the discussion. The uh, discussion for today, uh, before we start off, I want to uh, let everyone know that this is a clubhouse uh, discussion, as well as it'll be recorded for a podcast for our 30-day content creators of color, as well as the um, um, the uh, Forefront Radio itself. Jen, uh, could you, if you would, introduce yourself, please? Yes, good evening. This is Jen. I'm the host of Woke by Accident podcast. It is a weekly chat about socially conscious topics impacting the culture. Thank you. Yeah, we've done a lot of collaborations and everything, and I, I appreciate you joining up in the room. Um, so what I wanted to talk about was recently um, there was a post given that uh, one of our colleagues had shared, and I wanted to see if we could, you know, have a discussion with all the uh, people and see what their thoughts was in related in related to this uh, particular topic. Um, to go back to it, it was a link that uh, the uh, host of White Label American posted in a group chat that we had. And I'm trying to find the link now so I can <laughs> click on it briefly. Ah, voila, here it is. So I'm going to play the uh, link uh, and you'll hear it in the audio. Tamsin and Corey, drill music has been around for more than a decade, but local activists tell us what's different is that the music now has a darker tone with drill rappers creating songs and viral dances that celebrate local murders. Tonight, the mayor is calling on prominent rappers and big tech companies to be part of the solution. I had no idea what drill rapping was, but I called my son and he sent me some videos and it is alarming a gritty form of rap with songs and viral dances made to celebrate local murders the violence is infused in the music two drill rappers have been murdered in new york city so far this month the story of 18 year old jaquan mckinley known as c high brought mayor eric adams to tears thursday the story of jaquan breaks my heart his story tests my spirit McKinley was shot and killed, leaving a recording studio in Bed-Stuy Sunday morning. On February 1st, 22-year-old Tajay Dobson, known as T.Dot Wu, was killed in a drive-by shooting in Canarsie, just hours after securing a record deal. There have been lately a number of shootings of known rappers, some very known with good careers uh, right in front of them. Aisha Sekou runs Street Corner Resources in Harlem. Sekou says her organization is increasingly responding to shootings, stabbings, and beatdowns that are carried out in retaliation for drill music songs that brag about local murders. There are calls to action in the music. <laughs> on the grave, to smoke uh, on the grave of someone. Hot 97 DJ Drewski recently said he'll no longer play what he calls diss music on the radio. But rapper and Brooklyn native Fabio Foran defended Drill this week, saying it's not the music killing people. Mayor Eric Adams told PIX11 today he's focused on the social media sites where Drill videos can rack up tens of thousands of views. We're going to ask these companies, we're going to ask them for good corporate responsibility. This is contributing to the violence that we're seeing all over this country. The mayor is also calling on prominent rappers to step up and step in. I am meeting with some of the top known rappers. Uh, we have a meeting set up where we're going to sit down 
and really bring in the rappers and show how this is impacting and is causing the loss of lives of young people like them. So that was the clip really briefly from uh, a reporter by the name of Ayana Harry. Um, I thought it was quite interesting, this uh, particular discussion, because it's talking about the uh, effects of music and how that impacts our uh, people in uh, society. What are your thoughts on the uh, clip you just heard, uh, Jen? It's really um, sad what's going on. I was just watching a program on TV One about the death of the young lady's name was Hadea Pendleton. And I guess her death uh, back in 2013 was prominent because it happened under Obama's administration. And she died like, I guess, like a block away from their home or something like that. And it turns out that the young men responsible for her death were a part of a gang. And they used the term, you know, we were running drills or what have you. And so that clicked when I saw that clip because I've heard of that type of music. And I guess it's clicking in my mind that that's drill music, like King Von and Keith, you know, I've heard of that music. And so, you know, it's so sad that... So many people are dying, even the artists like King Von, you know, died so young and, you know, so talented. But if you look at the lyrics and, you know, what he was involved in, you know, so that's, you know, a larger discussion, but very familiar with with, what's going on and what's impacting our young people, definitely. So, you know, I'm 36 and I feel like an old man because back in the day, I used to listen to uh, Tupac, Biggie, um, Nas, DMX. While they did have uh, certain lyrics that were, um, you know, uh, not conducive to a positive direction for society, people weren't going around killing each other. They weren't going around doing stuff like that, you know. So I'm looking at the uh, definition of drill music on Google. I popped it up on Wikipedia and it says drill music is a style of trap music defined by its dark, violent, and nihilistic lyrical content, an ominous trap influence beat. Media attention and the signing of drill musicians to major labels followed. Artists within the genre had been noted for their style of lyricism and association with crime in Chicago. So this basically started early 2010, um and it's been progressing to getting worse and worse it was called mid mid how uh midwest hip-hop before then it was called trap then it was called gangster now it's called drill and i agree with you it's like a warrior like kind of dark sinister kind of music um that is extreme you know when you're saying stuff like you're gonna you know smoke somebody grave and all of this stuff like that like it's crazy to me you know Right, it is, but um, that term like running drills. Well, in this program, I saw like I guess in the gang culture, like to go shoot up a rival gang side is like running a drill, and it looks like she was just like the, got caught up in the crossfire. This Hadea Pendleton murder, you know, she wasn't the intended target or anything like that she was just literally like it happened on a playground in uh chicago and it was just you know the rival gangs were on either side of the playground and they literally just had no regard for the people out there and you know several people's lives have been lost clearly so how old is this young lady that was killed do you recall in that story yeah um, I'm looking it up now. It, she was 15 at the time. So it was really... Hmm. So 15-year-olds, basically, which is basically a child, you know, um, that's that's really sad, man. That's really sad. Yes. I'm, I'm sorry for the family that they had to experience the loss of a child. Um, with that being said, you know, we were in a discussion earlier today, and some people think that music doesn't have influence um, on you know, people's mind and their psyche. What do you think about that? Do you think music has an impact on people's mind? So, in this case, 
if you, you have to look at the lyrics and you mean like you said or like a lot of people say you know guns don't kill people people kill people and things like that but especially in the cases of some of these artists what they're saying is putting them behind bars you know bobby schmurter you know they took his lyrics right to the and you know to his trial and that put him away for many years so what they are saying in these songs definitely it's more than just lyrics you know especially when there's this beef going on with different crews or you know different individuals and a lot of it you know points to real events and things like that and so you can't just say that oh it's just a song you can't because it's escalated. It's, you know, it's more escalated than the Biggie Tupac situation. And back then, you know, lives were at stake. So this is really like taking it to a whole nother level. I agree with that wholeheartedly, Jen, because when you think about it, um, even in, you know how they say death and life is in the power of the tongue, right? Um whatever you say has impact, whether it's positive or whether it has uh, negative connotations. Um, there's a saying in the Bible in 1 Corinthians 15, 33, that says, don't be deceived. Like we shouldn't walk around lying to ourselves, which is what I believe people do when they say stuff like music doesn't impact people, people kill people. Yes, the people kill people, but what is it that's being communicated to the minds of people causing them to want to be violent, right? So it says, be not deceived. Evil communication corrupt good manners. So my thought process is, if you hear the music and the lyrics and the lyrics have a negative, like music has always had influence. When you think about your childhood of how you learn something as basic as the alphabet, right? You learned it through music. Even now to this day, the same music that you sing, Twinkle, Twinkle, Little Star, is the same song for the alphabet. <laughs> Little do people realize it, you know? Um, so, yeah, I think music does have a, a significant impact on the minds and psyche of people. And what's funny is I remember um, I was getting some pushback when I mentioned that because some people were having that same notion of, oh, you know, it's just people that uh, have bad intentions in their mind and stuff like that. You know, I found an article dated today, actually, that was updated at uh, 7 5 a.m. this morning by the New York Post. And if I may, I'll, I'll touch on it briefly. And if you want, we could uh, discuss it. The title is called Inside Drill Rap, the ultra violent genre NYC Mayors wants to shut down so now it's going into the uh discussion provided by michael kaplan and brad hamilton this is from the newyorkpost.com dated february 16th 2022 uh, and it states this drill rap songs are number one with a bullet just the very first sentence alone you're just like oh <laughs> they coming for the smoke drill rap songs are number one with a bullet and that's terrifying in new york city mayor eric adams cops and victims of the genres sometimes trigger happy rappers who glorify killing in their songs and are quick to reach for guns to settle disputes adams call to ban drill rap videos from social media following the murder of a rapper jaquan mckinley an 18-year-old who performed under the name Chill Vit Wiz, Wivitz, I guess that's what it is, Chill Wit, Chai, Chai Wivitz, uh, and was shot dead in an ambush last week outside a recording studio in bed -Stuy has uh, put the music under intense scrutiny. Drill rappers are surging in popularity, partly due to their flashy videos, which depict young thugs who wield handguns, splash around money and smoke blunts, and have no problem blasting their rivals. What are your thoughts on that, Jen? Yeah, so that's, you know, describing what they're describing. What it is, and I did hear about that artist. Not necessarily familiar with the music, but I did hear about that 
murder and that the um, mayor had spoke out about it. I mean, yeah, something has to be done, you know, so I, you know, feel, I agree that the mayor, you know, should say something to the community about it because, I mean, especially in Chicago, like, so the murder rate is so high and this is, you know, a significant factor. More conversations need to be had about this, clearly. So in the uh, next part of the article, it says that it's deadlier than just aggressive videos. Uh, Brooklyn District Attorney Eric Gonzalez told Fox News, we've, quote, we've had a number of shootings in Brooklyn recently that are directly related to drill rap. Uh, The rappers appear on Facebook Live and Instagram Live, and they're taunting their rivals in the rival gang's territory, saying, we're here, come get us. If we see you, we're going to shoot. So... And what do you think is uh, solutions to this? And do you think that there's that this is truly more psychological warfare that's going on? When you say psychological warfare, I guess I'm not familiar with that term so much. So when you think of psyche, that's dealing with your mind, okay? And when you think of war, that's referring to battle, that's referring to strategic military force, right? So there's a correlation between music and psychological warfare, meaning there's there's a way where people use music to impact your mind. People don't really understand this, but I, I give that example of how you know the alphabet ever since you was a kid, three, four, five years old, singing that alphabet song, and now you never forget it. And, you know, you, you can reach 20, 30, 40, 50, all the way to 70 years old, and you'll always remember that song. So music has an impact on the mind. So a psyop is usually what it's uh, talked about, or psyware. These are different uh, words similar to, to what is known as psychological warfare, okay? So from Wikipedia, psychological warfare or the basic aspects of modern psychological operations have been known by many other names or terms, including military information support operations, psyops, or political warfare or propaganda. So when you think of propaganda, right, what it is is basically organizations, governments, corporations trying to use various techniques aimed at influencing a targeted audience's value system, their belief system, their emotions, their thoughts, their motivations, their reasoning, or their behavior. So think about it like back then, right? Back in the day when hip hop music first came out, was it ultra violent or was it more about like peace and unity and love between one another? Okay, so are you saying because of the type of music this is like a comparison? that this could be like are you comparing it to psychological work for yes exactly that's exactly the the uh purpose of me creating this room because i want to prove that music can be used for psychological warfare you see what i'm saying so that's why the title is called drill music psych warfare and the mayor um what i'm what i want to prove is that propaganda has been used against our people to change our belief systems, our views, our emotions, our uh, mo- uh, motivations, how we behave as a group. So I asked the question, my question was, in the early stage of hip hop, was it super violent like it is now? No, I get that, but I'm just trying to see like, like, so of course it wasn't violent like that. So I guess I just, I think I, I'm coming full circle now with the point and I guess I feel different about the psychological warfare part about it, you know, especially, you know, the artists are are creating these songs, you know, half the people don't realize that what they're talking about and the serious nature of it. And then some people know full well what's going on and can pretty much draw you a map that he just said that he murdered this guy last week and he's going to kill this guy, you know, next week. And, you know, they, and people realize it that well. So, but I mean, I, w- I wouldn't call it, you know, psych warfare. 
I'm, I'm glad that you have that opinion because now what I want to do is prove that the United States, as well as the uh, corporations that are involved with the music industry, are fully aware of how to use music to manipulate the minds of people. Um, hence, I, I tried to give that progression of the early stages of hip hop. When we were in control of hip hop, you had different groups like Run DMC, Public Enemy, you know, that was speaking against the oppression that we faced after the civil rights era, the Black Panther era, and all these uh, time frames of our foreparents, right? And how music has progressed now to gangster rap. Who had influence on doing that? It was the corporations, the Def Jams, the Bad Boys, the, um, you know, Universal, all of these companies that popularized music that was going on in our community that we call gangster rap. You see what I'm saying? So because they were when investing... The... Uh -huh. mm -hmm. No, go ahead. They Because they did what now? W what I'm saying is that these folks know what they're doing. They know what they're doing. They, they know how to popularize a particular segment in society <laughs> that's negative to cause it to be popular throughout the masses for the sole purpose of affecting their mind, body, and spirit. Okay, like mm -hmm. I'll give an example. Uh, 20 years ago, you never heard of twerking. You know, you never heard of that. That was a new term that came up relatively recent, right? They had music geared towards overly sexualizing our women. Our women were very conservatives in the 50s and the 60s, in the 70s and 80s. But going into the 90s and forward, you had booty bass music, you had trap music, you had bass and sound. You had all these different music uh, genres popping up over sexualizing our women, right? Changing them from being morally good women to now what we call um, uh, thought culture or WAP culture. You see what I'm saying? So now on the man's perspective, when you look at the early stages of music, and I'm familiar with this because I love music. I used to be involved in doing radio shows and all of that stuff, right? Doing talent shows, doing tours all over Miami, right? Initially, the music was about uplifting the people, getting them out of oppression, unity, all of that. And then slowly over time, it was like, no, nah, let's just give them some, some gangster rap. Let's, some, let's sprinkle some violence in there so they could redirect their anger instead of to the real threat that of those that have been impacting them to, to those that are now their own kind, their own people. You see what I'm saying? So the artist is creating this music themselves. Like in their world, this is their reality. You know what I mean? Just like Tupac, this is my reality. You know, when at that time people were like, oh my God, I can't believe Tupac's is saying those things. But that was his reality. King Von, you know, the things he was saying, that was his reality. You know what I mean? Like as violent as it is, that's what these young guys are going through as violent as it is, it's their truth. So how can it be a corporation if it's their truth? So, yeah, I like what you said, because you're saying that these kids grew up in that environment and they're growing up pushing the same generational curse. So my, my question would be then, oh, and touching on Tupac, you know, Tupac used to play ballet, right? So if he wanted to get out of that, oh, he could have yeah. definitely got out of that. So that's not an excuse. Yeah. To me, yeah. there's, there's no excuse. If you know that certain things are violent and extreme and harm cause harm to your people, you glorifying that does not justify your actions. Just because you're writing down in a book, you know, oh, this is what I see going on, or you want to do something, half of them be actors. Half of them don't even do what the stuff that they say. You understand no, what I'm saying? Like the ones that are actually gang members, like, look how many, uh, you know, mm -hmm. wealthy and rich rappers are toting their gang affiliation mm -hmm. to the day, you know, they yep. die, you know, yep. we can only have to count them or say their names, mm -hmm. like, they're just not going to let that go be because that's a part of who they are for whichever reason they don't want to let that go. Mm -hmm. And so that's their truth. No, that's the lie that they've received from society. See, what we'd like to do is try to um, 
analyze with statistical data, logical information, and not attach like emotional involvement. If that's their truth, if that's how they feel, that doesn't negate that prior to them coming on the scene, because this started in the early 2010s, right? Prior to that type of music coming up, you had the 90s music with the gangster rap, okay? So there was influence that happened to these children to cause them to perpetuate that particular cycle, whether it's poverty, whether it's poor um, education, whether it's uh, psychological distress due to oppression, not having employment, all these different factors relate to why it's their quote unquote truth. So now I have an article real quick talking about the relationship between music as a tool for psychological warfare. And this is on Wikipedia. Real quick, I'll go over it briefly. Uh, it is called Music in Psychological Operations. Music can be used as a tool of psychological warfare. The term music torture is sometimes used to describe the practice while it is acknowledged by the United States interrogation experts to cause discomfort, it has been well characterized as having no quote unquote long term effects. But we're going to find out that this is capping, right? So they're saying that music has been used to affect people's mind. Now, watch this. It says music and sound have been used usually used, I'm sorry, music and sound have been usually used as a part of a combination of interrogation methods, today recognized by international bodies as amounting to torture. Amounting to torture. Attacking all senses, leaving without leaving any visible traces. They have formed the basis of the widely discussed uh, torture in Guantan Guantanamo Bay and Abu Ghraib. They were, however, devised much earlier in the 1950s and 1960s as a way to counter so-called Soviet brainwashing. Methods of noise torture or sound torture, which include the continuous playing of music or noise, have been paired with sensory deprivation, sleep deprivation, food and drink deprivation, and stress positions. So now, Think about this article and now think about our communities. Do our communities suffer from psychological stress? Yes. Do they suffer from post-traumatic slave syndrome? Yes. Do they suffer from being constantly given a form of music that has been brainwashing them to perpetuate violence? Yes. So now we have an article here basically stating that the governments already knew about this to be fact. You see what I'm saying? That music was uh, used as a means to to uh, uh, destroy the minds of people. So I'm going to give you some examples. Here are some instances of use. In the United States, a BBC News report claimed that music by the American heavy metal band known as Metallica, along with the children's television program called Barney the Dinosaur and Sesame Street, was used for sleep deprivation and to con uh, to culturally offend Iraqi prisoners of war, okay? Then the next portion says, this is claimed to be, uh, it's claimed to being used by the United States 361st Psychological Operations Company by Sergeant Mark Hadsell. So now we're reading a quote from a military officer telling you what they did. Here's the quote. Quote, these people haven't heard heavy metal. They can't take it. If you play it for 24 hours, your brain and your body functions start to slide. Your train of thoughts slow down and your will is broken. That's when we come in and talk to them. So in this instance, you see that this military officer is saying that he used, that was just for 24 hours, that they used heavy music to brainwash people in order to interrogate them. This was known as music torture. Here's another example. In the War on Terror, the United States used songs like The Real Slim Shady by Eminem, The Meow Mix theme song, and Fuck Your God by Deicide to torture. 
Here's another section. When the United States invaded Panama in, in December of 1989, Manuel Noriega took refuge in the Holy See's ambassy, em, embassy on December 24th, which was immediately surrounded by U.S. troops. After being continually bombarded by hard rock music, including Van Halen's hit song Panama and the Howard Stern show for several days, Noriega surrendered on January the 3rd, 1990. According to the FBI, witnesses observed sleep depri deprivation interviews with strobe lights and loud music. Interrogators said it would take four days to break someone doing an interrogation, 16 hours with lights and music on and off for four hours. A handwritten note next to the type uh, synopsis says, OK, under DOD policy, quote, rumors that interrogator bragged about being uh, about doing lap dance on detainees, another about making a detainee listen to satanic black metal music for hours, then dressing as a priest and baptizing the detainee to save him. The handwritten note said, yes, witness saw a detainee in an interview room sitting on the floor with an Israeli flag draped around him, loud music and strobe lights. With uh, suspects, this uh, practice is used by the United States Department of Defense, uh, DHS, based on who he saw in the hallway. So that's just a portion of it. What are your thoughts, Jen, on what we just read? Okay, so we know that this goes on. This has even been dramatized on some of the military shows that come on television. So we know that this goes on, them putting you in a room, putting a red light on, and putting some sort of, you know, music to have some kind of effect. I guess I'm just trying to understand, are you saying that this type of music can do the same thing? Or Because I that part, I'm not really... Correct. I correct. Know. That's that's okay. exactly what yeah, I'm saying. I'm so that. I mean, I definitely feel like it's you know impacting the youth and there's influence, but I don't buy psychological warfare. But um, mm -hmm. I you know do feel like it's an you know as far as you know why music was different in the 80s and 90s, the trends change. It's not always going to be the same. Music has never, you know, there's always going to be a, you know, shift in the music. And, you know, do we know that it was going to go to such a violent trend? And is all of it violent like this? No. We have people like J. Cole and, you know, Kendrick Lamar that all of their music is not like that. So, you know, it's, you know, it's a certain slice that is like this. Yeah, there are certain uh, people in our population that are involved in the music entertainment industry that are not aware of these greater agendas that are going on. But the purpose of me bringing this doc uh, document forth from the Wikipedia Encyclopedia is that to prove that there are already documented cases all the way as back as the 1950s, where the governments were trying to use music to to uh manipulate people and now you also acknowledge that to be fact as well just in uh, in your early statement so what i'm saying is the the progression of how music turned out from the 1950s to now has gradually gotten worse and worse so how does it relate to the what the mayor had said right because the mayor wants to to ban that particular type of music the reason why this uh, relates to this particular topic is the mayor has that understanding that the music that we listen to has an impact on our mind. Just like we read in that Bible verse, evil communications corrupt good manners. So if you're hearing about murder, murder, kill, kill, destroy, rape, rob, pillage, over and over and over and over, not for a period of 24 hours like the people that's suffering from being in prison in, in these places like Guantanamo Bay, but for two or three years, okay? Four years, five years, or or as you said, that growing up and thinking that, that that's normal, that that's their quote unquote truth. Of course, you're going to run the streets thinking that on, the only thing you could do in life is be a thug or be a thought or be a, a drug dealer because we don't have 
strong-minded individuals in our communities that are going to say, look, enough with the games. You need to stop with the music. You need to stop with the culture. Let's focus on your education. Let's focus on solutions. So that's why I brought up the room topic, because I want to think of solutions of how we can address what's going on in the communities. And we know for a fact, you know, if you think back to um, back in the day with, uh, do you remember when, um, what's his name? Ice Cube was talking about that uh, that uh, record executive that was manipulating him. I had sold a lot of records with America's Most Wanted and I think uh, Kill It Will. <clears throat> mm -hmm. And I wanted an advancement on my next record because O'Shea Jr. was about to be born. Mm -hmm. Okay? Mm -hmm. yeah. So I say, man, you know, I got a baby coming and I need to get out of, out of this apartment that I was in. I want to get a house for my family. And By the way, that's crazy. That's when you talk about like two seat, like yeah. classic albums, right? Yeah. And they're out and they've sold. And like, it's not like people found them later. Like those were giant albums. Yes. And you're like, I'm going to try to get out of an apartment now. I mean, I, I, I was in an apartment because that's that was really my first time being able to move out and do anything. So that was just my mm -hmm. spot. Uh -huh. I was stacking money then. But I was a hundred grand short on this house uh -huh. uh, because when you buy a house, you got to have not only your money, but a little extra money to give away for the house. So I was a hundred grand short and I said, dude, I need an advancement on my record. You know what I mean? Give me advancement. And, uh, you know, the album almost finished. He was like, cool. You know, on the phone, he was like, cool. So when we went through escrow, I called him. I'm like, yo, escrow about to close. I'm a hundred G short. I need that. Cute. I don't know what you're talking about. What? I don't I don't remember saying I would give you that. I was like, dude, <laughs> don't play with me. Nah, man, I, I, I don't remember giving you that. I said, oh, okay. I said, I'm on my way up there. <laughs> <laughs> it's terrible news. <laughs> yeah. it's the I'm worst on my way news. Up there. I'm on my way up there. <laughs> and uh, I got up there and, you know, I walked through. They they saw me with a bat. But they, <laughs> <laughs> what's up, Cube? Hey man, how you doing? What's Holding up? a baseball. What's, what's up? Just what's coming to get this sign. Going where 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 Brian at, man? <laughs> oh, he's in there. So I go in his office. Now I got the lynch mob with me. You know, I got right. You know, JD T Bone Shorty. We go in there, and he's in his bathroom in his office, uh, and um, and so we you know. Of course, in the movie, we walk in and it just happens. Sure, sure, sure. But in reality, he was in the bathroom, and when he came out, we was just posted up in his office. By the way, way more horrifying. <laughs> and, and that's that's the only reason he didn't shit himself. Yes. <laughs> he just come out of the bathroom. Otherwise. <laughs> so he's like, hey, hey, Q, what's, 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 what's up? What's going on? Like he didn't know. <laughs> yeah. I'm like, so he goes to his desk, and I go and close the door. You know, uh -huh. one of those... Now you can't sleep. <laughs> right? And um, and I just start to berate him, man, and tell him why he's wrong and fucked up for what he's doing. And it, I just got more heated and heated and heated. And then I'm just looking at the, all these records and everything had, I was so fed up at this time with, with this paper pushing, call the lawyer, all this kind of, this was the world I didn't know. Mm -hmm. Right. So I'm like, man, I, I got to take this back to South Central. All right. So in that instance, Ice Cube said he had to speak his truth. <laughs> you know, so I found this uh, other article uh, where a person is asking the question, does uh, does the influence, what impact does rap music have on society? I'm going to play that briefly. Does rap music have a negative impact on youth? Some people believe that rap music has had considerable influence on children and teenagers, most of which has been negative. They claim that the lyrics are often too violent and especially insulting to women. Thus, they say, rap music has contributed or added to aggression among young people and to behavior that disrespects women. Do you think that listening to rap music leads to aggression? Should we have rules to prevent rap artists from talking about violence, especially violence against women? Would it be sufficient evidence, in your view, 
to support the claim that RAF has a negative impact on youth? All right, in that particular um, section, this person was giving his, uh, their opinion as far as the influence of rap music and how it has impacted society as a whole. For me, being that I have three children and they're all young, I want to always give them something positive to think about, something positive that will guide them towards being better productive members of society. Like I, my goal for my son, for example, if it's his dream, would be to become somebody successful in in the uh, medical field, maybe a doctor or a physician assistant or something, you know, medicine related, just like his dad. You know, same for my other kids, whatever goals that they want to aspire to, I want to allow them to get to that point. But a lot of times what we don't realize is that even these authors, them, these, these musicians themselves, don't want their kids to listen to their own music. Like, I remember, was it Nicki Minaj or was it Cardi B that didn't Cardi want... Cardi B, mm-hmm. She didn't want her, her daughter to listen to it or something like that? Like, like the song WAP, I think it was? I did hear that. I did hear that. Mm-hmm. I'm gonna uh, play a clip about that real quick. <laughs> I'm not giving it. I'm not giving the damn rain pop up for you. Rain pop. Just give her the rain pan pop. Cardi B is defending the fact that she does not let her two-year-old daughter culture listen to her music. A couple days ago, Rap TV tweeted a clip of Cardi's Instagram Live from August, where she turns off her hit WAP after culture comes into the room. This is the same woman that ended up meeting the president of the United States. We can't really think that this is logical for us to come across a person that made a song about there's holes in this house allow her children to listen to that type of music. So psychological warfare is in existence. This woman is retarded. <laughs> this woman is, I had to cut the tape. I was like, hold up, wait, cut the tape. The woman said something stupid. <laughs> Who talks about having sex in front of their kids? That's dumb as hell. But anyways, this is the culture that we have to deal with. This is the, the thought process of people in society, you know? Um, they try, So the artist herself, was like, nah, I ain't letting my kid listen to this WAP song because it's not good for her. But yet she allows your kids, your nieces and nephews to listen to it with no problem because it's going to get her that bank. You understand what I'm saying? And it's like, yo, people look at these people, these celebrities and think that they're, they're, they're role models. They're not. They're just there to make money off of music. That's all. You know, They're not role models. They're not nobody to look up to. Like, they, they're not. So... She said it plain. She's like, this is adult content. This is not for children. But guess what? When you play that song on the radio, you got your kid in the car. You got your niece. You got your nephew in the car. <laughs> you got your cousin in the car. And they're listening to adult music, which is telling you, going to the point of what we're saying is that music has an impact on the mind. What are your thoughts on that, Jen, before we uh, end up closing up the room for today? Yeah, I agree. Um, the music is not intended for a child, but of course the clean version radio is radio edit is played on the radio, even though the kids are smart enough to know what the bleeped out or blanked out words mean. So, you know, us as adults and the parents and the aunts and all of that have to, you know, like you said, take responsibility. We can't look to the celebrities and these artists to be those role models we have to be the role models and put on appropriate music and things like that exactly and i want to leave off with this one uh bible verse that's in first john chapter 2 verse 15 that says this love not the world neither the things that are in the world if any man love the world the love of the father is not in him for all that is in the world the lust of the flesh and the lust of the eyes and the pride of life is not of the Father, but is of the world. And the world passeth away, and the lust thereof. But he that does the will of God abides forever. 
According to Psalms chapter 40, verse 8, it says, Thy delight to do thy will, O my God, yea, thy law is within our heart. So the purpose of this room for anyone that wants to listen to this episode is to encourage our, our youth, encourage our brethren, our sistren to have the laws of God in their mind. It will avoid a lot of issues that we face in the Black community when we could change the minds of the people away from the things of this world into positive, creative things that will create honor, dignity, respect, and royalty amongst our people. So I am Afia Levi, the host of The Forefront Radio. You can listen to The Forefront on Spotify, iHeartRadio, and other uh, streaming platforms. This is a part of the 30, content, 30 days of content provided by the content creators of color. We appreciate everybody that joined on. If you would, Jen, go ahead and talk about your show and uh, how anyone can get in touch with you. Thank you. Again, I am Jen. I am the host of Woke by Accident podcast, a weekly chat about socially conscious topics. It is available on all of your favorite social platforms for streaming and also on www.wokebyaccident.net. Thanks. Thank you so much for being a part of this uh, episode. I appreciate you, Jen. Thank you for listening to the Forefront Radio. We now have a cash app. The link is in the description of the page here on anchor.fm, also on Spotify. We appreciate you listening in. We do have a few features that we are including now. We are selling a few products such as watches, perfumes, colognes, and other uh, products will be available for our Israelite community, as well as the general community of the population. We have a Facebook page. Just type in The Forefront Media, and you'll be able to get updates of uh, various shows that we drop when they do drop. Um, please do share this show if you like the show, and we do hope that you do love this show. And uh, tune in for more uh, episodes once we have them available. Thank you for listening to The Forefront. I'm your host, Afiel Levi Israel.